And today we're going to be talking about Megazords. Since Hasbro announced its Megazord release, it's been under a magnifying glass to see if it'll hold up as THE new Megazord, potentially replacing whatever Megazords you previously owned. Now, is that a fair or unfair thing to do? I do suppose it's natural when a new toy company tries to take on what another has done in the past. However, a lot of the comments that I've been hearing are that one should just get the Legacy Megazord instead. To me, that's a bit of a head-scratcher, and for quite a few reasons. So I thought I'd have a little bit of a retrospective on the Legacy Megazord. Before we talk about the actual Legacy Megazord, I want to say that we have to give props to the original Daizujin or Megazord mold for being the one that started it all, and really holding up nicely design-wise to this day. The Bandai Japan Megazord essentially laid all the engineering groundwork for all the Megazords that followed. In 2010, after Bandai America had been making their own versions of the Megazords for a while partly due to cost and partly due to what they perceived kids would appreciate, they released a Megazord in the 2010 reversion line of toys. This new Megazord kept much of the engineering of the original but was made of a lighter, hollower plastic. It also connected its Zords via ports something that would be later referred to as the Zord Builder System. The Zord Builder System is a fantastic feat on its own, but for now, I'm going to focus on the Megazord itself. As a new take, it did its job, but not without cutting corners. The Pterodactyl was hollow, the Triceratops was a brick with an unarticulated tail, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex had its connection ports jutting out of its knees, and like I said, it was essentially hollow in a lot of places. When the Megazord mode was put together, it was fairly decent, but you could really notice that there's a bit of a difference in terms of proportions. Personally, I never liked the fact that the shoulder pads were way too high up, and the kneecaps were way too low. This always bothered me, as they were the things that stood out to me most as different from the original look of the Megazord, both in the show and as a toy. In 2013, Bandai America re-released this as part of the Legacy line. This would be called the Legacy Megazord, this time with pre-applied stickers and die-cast parts. Yay! The only problem was, it was die-cast in the wrong places. They literally took all the plastic that would have been silver or gray and made those die-cast. But looking at the design, the problem was, all of it was in the Mastodon and Tyrannosaurus areas, which would be on the top of the Megazord. The problem? The Sabertooth Tiger and Triceratops Zords had very little silver and thus their bodies were left mostly plastic. This meant that when the Megazord was formed, all of the weight was on top, with it being supported by hollow plastic legs. This made for a very unevenly weighted toy. All the faults I mentioned from the previous Megazord, which was the 2010 Megazord remained essentially because it was the same mold, being the hollow pterodactyl and the odd proportions and the general hollowness of everything. These um, legs are way, way too long. Like, uh, and this part is what annoys me as well. It's exposed, and in, in the new Hasbro version it is as well, but they do a better job of making it look like one shin. But here it just looks like the part where uh, the, it's supposed to go inside the Triceratops leg. You know, it's supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like that. But no, it, it just, it's left exposed. And also this pterodactyl section is way too long. I mean, he barely has a crotch part. Look at it. Look at his crotch. That sounded weird. <laughs> Well, what really got me were these... See how, how high his shoulder pads are? They should be around here. But I'm not going to sit here and say that the Legacy Megazord didn't count for something. I mean, the Legacy line's next few toys were well-balanced mixes of plastic and metal made with excellent detail. For a while because of this, Fans clamored for a proper Legacy Megazord held to the same standards that all the other Legacy releases were. 
the Legacy line got so good that the final release of the Power Zord system, Titanus, was carried over to Japan almost wholesale as Soul of Chogokin King Brachian. But again, the Legacy Megazord itself left a lot to be desired. Many fans who could have since doled out the cash for Soul of Chogokin Megazord as soon as it was released as it's probably the most excellent version of the Megazord released to this day. I would be where the price is now though. With Hasbro now taking the reins over for Power Rangers, the Legacy Megazord is obviously a thing of the past and will not be re-released. That, plus its cross-compatibility with other Legacy Zords, have made the Legacy Megazord command a hefty price. I mean, all things considered, I'm keeping it because, you know, the Legacy Megazord is still what facilitates the Legacy combinations with the Legacy Dragon Zord and Legacy Titanus, and I want to go crazy with Tiger Zord and all of the, those other swords that I own. So, you know, of course I'm keeping it. With the new Hasbro Megazord, some folks seem to conflate price for value and value for quality. I see how a lot of unfair comparisons are being made about the Hasbro Megazord, and a lot of it is because of the hollow plastic. But again, going back, that's literally where the Legacy Megazord started. Both Megazords even have hollow pterodactyls. Look at this empty shell of a pterodactyl. There's nothing in there. And I did say they're hollow and, and people are gonna be like, of course the Hasbro version is hollower. Yes, yes, I agree. But this was hollow for its time. Remember, these were made to cut on costs. So these were made at the time when when Bandai wanted to. As for the proportion, Hasbro does a much better job. Though I do feel the knees are also a bit low. I do have to point out that a major critique of the Hasbro Megazord is its lack of paint apps or stickers, and this is a fair critique. However, this is easily remedied with a BT-15 decal set. I mean, look at this. Basically, for the price point of what it is now, it's a lot more comparable to the 2010 Megazord at release, and it's fairer to be compared to that. But I would point out that the new Megazord has points of articulation not present in either the original Bandai Japan or the American re-release in 2010 and the Legacy version as well. I guess what I'm saying now is, if you want an entry-level Megazord, the Legacy Megazord is not worth the chase. The Hasbro Megazord is just right for you to start with or for your kids to play with at this time, to be honest. But if you actually have money to burn, just save up and get the Soul of Chagokin one. Now that is a Megazord. Look at it. It's such a great Megazord that someone actually tried to steal it from my place at one point. Yeah, I managed to get them to return it, but that's another story. But I'm saying, if, if you're gonna tell someone to just get this over the Hasbro Megazord if they don't own one, that's bonkers. But what do you think? Do you think the Hasbro Megazord is worth it, or would you rather chase the Legacy Megazord again? Sound off in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter at xpaco and my team at rangerwiki. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified for more content. Till next time, this has been X's Toy Universe.